can you reverse venous insufficiency? Leanne, I've spoken quite enough for now, but I'm quite happy to jump in later. Why don't you give this one a go? You start with this one. So uh, venous insufficiency in itself can't be reversed, but it certainly can be controlled. So remember, as Dr. Sarah Jarvis has mentioned, it's a failure of the veins and bringing the blood back from the toes back up to the heart. And actually, we can do very minimally invasive interventions within a vascular service to actually control and reduce the amount of hypertension. Believe it or not, you don't need half the veins in your lower legs. We can very easily ablate um, uh, that means simply removing the blood within the superficial venous system. The blood still returns by the deep venous system with no problems at all. So we can't reverse it, but we certainly we've got minimally invasive interventions that can help it. And don't forget, whilst you're waiting for all of these in terms of being seen by vascular and your intervention, the use of compression hosiery can help to support your veins, helping to push that blood and squeeze that blood back up. And that starts to reduce that inflammation uh, that Dr. Jarvis has talked about. So it certainly can be um, intervened on and controlled. Leanne, I obviously goes without saying, I agree with absolutely everything you say, but I am a GP, so you wouldn't expect me not to talk about general lifestyle changes. You can't reverse it again, as you so rightly say, you can't cure chronic venous insufficiency, but you may be able to reduce it. You can certainly reduce your risk of it, and you may well be able to reduce the risk of it getting worse. So smoking goes without saying there are there, there is a list as long as my arm and the arm of everybody on this webinar of reasons why it's never too late to stop smoking but avoiding you know restrictive clothing avoiding tight girdles tight belts not sitting or standing still for too long moving around as often as you possibly can having a heart healthy diet and there are especially i think in this case we're talking about getting your blood pressure checked getting your blood pressure controlled if you've got high blood pressure keeping your sodium intake down exercising regularly and of course keeping your weight within ideal within healthy levels if you possibly can and i I'm very well aware nobody can be a GP for 32 years without knowing that that is easier said than done. But it really, really does make a difference if that you can you can reduce that. If you've already got it, I think I would suggest that in addition to all the things that you've pointed out, um, elevating your legs, elevating your legs above the level of your heart, which will allow the blood to flow back. Because let's not forget that the blood flows out of your heart at very high pressure through your arteries. The issue arises when it's trying to get back to the heart and the pressure inside your veins is much lower than it is inside your arteries. But in addition, of course, it's also if you're standing or sitting with your legs down, trying to get back against gravity and that makes it a great deal harder. So keeping your legs up, but moving your legs will really get those muscle pumps in your thighs, in your calves rather working, and that'll help to get the blood back. And then likewise, checking your skin every time you shower and particularly talking to your doctor if you get any new ulcers, because that is just so important. If you have venous leg ulcers, it is not enough just to say, oh, I'll, you know, I'll have a compression stocking. And I appreciate they do a fantastic job, but we can't stop at that. You do need to get it assessed properly.